Wall Street Journal article, headline, pay raises are finally beating inflation after two years of falling behind. On the surface, good news. But you, the American worker, will decide if this is actually good news. Americans' growing paychecks surpassed inflation for the first time in two years. Inflation-adjusted average hourly wages rose 1.2% in June. That's year over year from last June. This according to the Labor Department. That marked the second straight month of seasonally adjusted gains after two years. If this trend continues, it gives Americans leeway to propel the economy through increased spending. That's me hitting the brakes. I brought my own sound effects today, guys. It's the best I can do, guys, on short notice. Hit the brakes. Now, this is conventional thinking. And what does conventional thinking lead us to? I'll tell you. Conformity. Conventional thinking, that's the way everybody does it. It's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Okay. That leads to destruction. Financial destruction. Spiritual destruction. Physical destruction. Mental, like We just do what everybody else does and we just accept we're just conformist and we're like the little mice following the Pied Piper off the edge of the cliff. So here's a reporter just writing, hey, if this trend persists, if people start, if wages are outpacing inflation, people have more money to spend. Woohoo! It's good for the economy. No, it isn't because credit card debt is at an all-time high. Six-figure earners are living paycheck to paycheck. We've been going through increased wages for over two years. It's part of what drove inflation. So you can't look at this and be like everybody else and go, oh, this is good news, Ken. Thanks for sharing. I think I'll head on down to Best Buy and get myself a TV. That's what we do. There's a lady on the front row smiling. She knows. I'm right. I mean, I'm. by the way, I'm not immune to this. I'm a human. What happens when we humans get a little jingle in our pocket? You know? I remember my granddaddy used to say, don't let that money burn a hole in your pocket. And I never knew what he meant. I was you know, no kid, by the way, ever knew what that phrase meant. But that's what your grandparents said to you back in the 80s. I'm old. Some of you millennials and Gen Z have no idea. have never heard that phrase in your entire life. Don't let money burn a hole in your pocket. What they were saying was is, hey, hold on to it. Keep it. Save it. So this is what the phrase should say. If the trend persists of wages and the increase in wages outpacing inflation, This will give Americans leeway to propel the economy through saving. Now, let me just explain this idea. If we, the people, are making more money and we decide to save more, guess what happens? It means we reduce our spending. And guess what happens when we reduce spending? Thank you for asking. Economics 101 coming up. Demand decreases. What happens when demand decreases? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Prices drop. What happens when prices drop? I save more money in my spending and that boosts the economy in a positive way. Oh, by the way, guess what else happens? Inflation drops. <gasps> Crazy how that works. And yet our feckless Fed chair, Jerome Powell, only knows one tactic, and it has worked, sort of, and that's raise interest rates. But his goal was to raise interest rates to lower income increases, and it's not working. And I said it wouldn't work, and I'm not a fancy economist, but I do understand fifth grade math. That's about the level that I top out at. That's all that's needed. So here's the deal. Inflation is dropping. That's good. But it is only good if we, the people, slow spending as inflation drops. It's going to be good for everybody. We are the economic engine, not D.C. 